to those watching this and maybe seeing these charts for the first time, looks like a lot's going on. Forget about that. Just look at the, the levels I'm going to tell you about. Number one, what do we see here? We see green dotted line, red dotted line. We see a market that broke to the downside. So if you're looking for a retracement for continuation, what are you looking for to qualify it? What is your aim and fire in ready aim fire progression that everybody should have no matter what your time frame is? A couple things happen. If you're looking to get short and looking for resistance to be 8687, we've got our green and red PWAP stands for position weighted average price. And also it was around 89 even just underneath it, which was ground zero, which is where we were before a big event. In this case, a big number came out. So you get a 500 lot buy pulse. In indicative of that light blue rectangle, all right? You get a couple of them, actually, but you get one, and we go up and come right back down. It's like, wait a second. If it's bullish, why didn't this big buyer get it to stay up? And then he comes in again, and it gets below it. And it starts to qualify that, indeed, these red-green lines could be resistance. Another thing happens. Look at all the longs come in right here. We go from red laser, which is more shorts than longs, to a green laser, more longs than shorts. You want more longs for the downside to be the right side. All right. Um, you also get into a situation where you have enough capacity for more sellers to come in when you start rolling lower, because this is only a 2,000 here, not 3,000 or 3,500. All right. Always remember that a market in a, in a normal ebb and flow, there's extremes, but a normal ebb and flow, there's only so much selling or so much buying before you kind of got to turn and go the other way, even if it's temporary. And that's where the beginning of a retracement or a pullback starts. It's because you go down because there's more sellers that need to sell than buyers that want to buy. That's the definition of why price goes down in the first place, correct? So, but at some point, when you get to a you, you get to a capacity, that's the best word I could use to describe this, so people can understand it. At some point, there's just not enough people to sell anymore, and so then you have to get prices to, in this case, go up before it could go back down. You got to reset the 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 sequence. Think about this analogy: if you had a one food store that serviced only X amount of people in the town. Only those people in the town could go to one store to get their food. All right. It could go anywhere else. They had to go to that store. And it was only those people that were going to buy from that store. So the food store knew who their buyers were. And the buyers knew who the seller was. Now with food, I use the analogy I use is a grocery store because everybody needs to eat. So they have to buy and they have to buy it from this store. So the, the, the food store knows that at some point, everybody in, in that we service pretty much have come through here in the last week. So we're going to be slow for the next two days. Well, how do you know that? How do you know that there's not going to be any buyers lower the price of some of this food? Why? Because we just know that this town only has so many people and we have sold. They've come here already. They generally come once a week. So 450 of the 500 customers we have have already come here and we've got two more days left in the week. Let's start lowering the prices and some of this food so we can get it off the shelf. There's a capacity in that town or in that example, right? Because nobody else is going to come to that store. So there's a capacity of how much is going to be able to be bought, how much is going to be able to be sold. Now, there are extremes where you get volatility. Those capacities will go up. Hence, why you get more downside follow through and more upside follow through. Because your capacities are bigger. You could take on more for, for various reasons. There's a fundamental shift. There was a big number that came out, an event, whatever. Whatever the catalyst is to drive volatility creates a, um, a higher capacity. All right? Uh, in, in the food grocery store analogy, uh, maybe for, for two weeks, you, you also could sell to two other towns. Boom. The buying capacity has just gone up. you got to adjust accordingly. But in the normal ebb and flow, you're only going to get this number so high or this number so high before you have to question how many more are left. 
because if there's not more left, if you're at or near capacity in this number, you will start to lose what you need to continue to do what you want it to do. In this case, go down. You will start to lose what you need for price to go down. If this is at capacity, buyers, you'll start to lose what you need for the price to go up. As traders slash investors, we're only trying to predict where the price is going to be, whether it's five seconds, five days, five years, whatever. Whatever your time frame is, we're in the predictive business. So if you're trying to predict north or south, up or down, you better know what it takes to go up or down. And I might have been surprised when I started in the educational business as to how little people knew, but I am no longer surprised. That's why I always have said the basics in trading is are also the advanced because the advanced or the, because the basics are, are skipped over. So the basics are not truly basic. Most people leapfrog over the basic because they don't know what they don't know.